in the early 2000s, I was 17 years old, just turned 17, and I joined the army. After basic training in something called AIT, I'd get to my unit and I'd meet my rear detachment force, or the soldiers who didn't deploy and were still associated with the unit, kind of maintaining the buildings and armory and doing paperwork related stuff. I learned from that rear detachment force that in two months, the main force would return. There was going to be some celebration, we'd meet them, they'd start rotating on much needed vacations, and then we'd be all one big happy family. This would not be the case. Pretty quickly, the rear detachment force during these two months would fill us in on a few key details. Had I been a little bit wiser and a little bit older and not just 18, I might have been able to prepare myself a little bit for what was about to happen. Very quickly, there was apparent drama between the deployed force and the at-home force. See, some of this rear detachment force was like clerical type soldiers doing paperwork from the get-go, so they had never deployed. And then some of those soldiers had deployed to this main unit, and there was some type of incident, and then they were sent back. They were very paranoid about this main force returning. They shared all types of really messed up stories that I'll tell another time. And when these few soldiers would tell these stories, they actually looked kind of scared. And what got me was a few of them were higher ranks, and we're talking sergeants and staff sergeants. They were mortified that this main force was coming back in two months. And on the flip side, some of those more clerical soldiers in this rear detachment force, their stories were, no, these few guys who were sent back were total shitbags and deserved it and just wait and hear the truth, right? So just to kind of give you this environment, there's a big group of 25 brand new soldiers for two months with this rear detachment force, and there's kind of a major drama in this rear detachment force where a small section are so nervous about meeting the rest of their big happy family, and the other ones seem like they're just saving up to buy popcorn. Well, these two months sure do roll around and we get to meet our big happy family. And right out of the gate, one guy who we're going to call Henry stands right out. And today's story is about Henry. So when we were meeting everybody, one guy was off from the rest. And everyone seemed to kind of give him space or almost ignore him, right? And it was very obvious that part of the reason was that he was injured. He had crutches on, he had a neck brace on, and he had a ton of like bandages and some type of upper body slash waist brace, some type of big injury to his chest. That's all I knew. So these introductions were coming out, and again, I'm noticing, what part of unit is this Henry guy in? Because we meet in the lower enlisted in the different squads, the squad leaders, now we're getting up to the high ranks, and I'm noticing this dude's a specialist. Like, his name should have been called... Well, at the very end, they introduce him as Henry, the worthless shitbag who couldn't do anything. And just like you right now, I, I was pretty shocked. All the other new soldiers were pretty shocked. Like, this guy should be, you know, he's a, he's a combat soldier. This is an E4, man. He's supposed to be part of the specialist mafia. He's supposed to have some type of cool guy respect. He got wounded in battle. And now he's here being introduced as the worthless shitbag who can't do anything. And they reference it again. He's like, yeah, he's on medical orders, so whenever we do something as a group, you just know that piece of shit is going to go stand somewhere, and we can all laugh at him. That's what they said. And in the next few weeks, that's what would happen. And not only that, but the new soldiers were given very specific orders not to engage with Henry. Don't say hello. Don't say goodbye. Don't look at him. Act like Henry doesn't exist. Over these following months, I'd find out that while on a patrol, Henry was in a convoy, and an RPG was shot at that convoy. It went into the Humvee that Henry was in, and then lodged itself without exploding inside of Henry's chest. This happened pretty early in the deployment. And again, if a missile goes inside of your chest, even if it doesn't explode... It's going to mess you up, right? It's going to break a ton of bones, it's going to tear all sorts of ligaments, and it's going to take you forever to heal. So for the rest of the deployment, 
Henry was in the military hospital locally. He couldn't do anything. And this is the reason why everybody hated him. That's it. Like, there wasn't any story of, like, him betraying anybody or friendly fire or any, anything like that. No valid reason. The reason was Henry got so messed up that doctors said he cannot lift anything. And the NCOs, our non-commissioned officers, became obsessed with this. And it, it, was, it was apparent by the time he got back because they'd smoke Henry. They found ways. They'd say, well, if your doctor said, it, like, in front of everybody, Henry, hold your arms out because you can't lift anything, but you can lift your own arms, right? Henry, lift your arms out. And the entire time they'd tell Henry, if you don't do what we tell you, you're not going to get your medical discharge. You will get dishonorably discharged and you will leave with nothing. We will take all your benefits. They'd NCOs like E7s would just kind of randomly ball up pieces of paper and throw it at Henry's head. They'd openly call him terrible names. Whenever we were getting a brief for a class, he'd have to stand at attention either behind everybody so no one was looking at him or in front of everybody and off to the side holding his arms out in a stress position to humiliate him. And I'd watch this go on for four months until his medical orders came through. And during these four months, the new soldiers started making fun of Henry too. And I couldn't believe it when it first started happening. Like, maybe it was because I was young or like had more discipline, but I could not believe that other young soldiers were making fun of this guy. I mean, he was injured in the war and we're all there as new soldiers, but they didn't give any type of shit, you know? Like a lot, they picked up on these social cues. A lot of these non commissioned officers have power, right? And they hate Henry because they can't control Henry. Henry's going to get out of the military and he's got all these limitations. You can't tell him to do anything. And they hate this. And so these new soldiers pick up on this little social cue that, hey, I'm going to get in tight with these non commissioned officers if I take part in making fun of Henry because I can't talk to him. But if I just kind of vaguely walk by him and make fun of him, these non-commissioned officers, they laugh. And during this time, you know, like to this day, I feel bad about it. I never spoke a word to Henry. I, act, I acted like he didn't exist, man. I didn't take part in making fun of him, but I didn't say hello. I didn't say goodbye. I laugh at other people's jokes and then just drop it, change the topic or stand there at parade rest if I had to, just whatever I had to do to get through the day. But I, I've felt... <laughs> I felt awful about it for like a really long time. And as a side note, one thing that I'd really like to do one day is to reach out to Henry and just like ask him his part of the story if he even wanted to talk about it. Because like put yourself in his shoes, man. What if Henry was me? I was that 17 year old. I turn 18. I get deployed. I'm gone for a year. Two, three months in, same thing happens to me. Right? Right? then I'm in a war zone for another year and four months because of that torch rotation. My unit hates me. Then I get back to my unit and then I'm brutally hazed, made fun of, smoked, all in front of a bunch of new grunts. That would, that would destroy my ego. And this is early 2000s, right? Like, it's, what they did was illegal, beyond illegal, but just a, maybe you're wondering, like, why nobody did anything, right? So I was in the Army, it took me two and a half years, not, like, after basic training, but, like, two, maybe two years of just being a soldier soldier, like, full-time, done with training, before I found out that no one could call the military police on you for not doing push-ups, like, we were told verbatim, if we tell you to push or do anything because we're smoking you and you don't, we're going to call the military police, you're going to lose everything, and you're going to spend the rest of your time in the army in some army jail. And we were convinced that that was the truth, right? So I'm assuming that this Henry guy must have thought the same thing. He must have. And the whole time, like, I can't express to you, like, how dejected this guy looked during all of this. Like, he had 
no life in him. Like, looking back on it, I'm so surprised that this guy didn't kill himself. There were quite a few suicides in the army while I was while I was in there. Um, barracks over, uh, there was a dude who killed himself and his body wasn't found for a week and a half. Like, how does that even happen? It does. A lot. I just think about that. You know? Like, what if one of the more important things you've ever done and you gave your everything, you're broken for the rest of your life, and your reward is that, just being completely used as, like, this humiliating thing? And, um, well, with this story, it's not the only time that I watched somebody get hazed in the military, but it was one of the first times. And I guess it's, like, just... It's pretty disappointing, man, because I, I didn't think about this again, like, much. Like, once in a while, I'd think about it, and i just nope right out. And it wouldn't really be until, like, a few years after I got out that I really started thinking, like, fuck, dude. How awful must it have been to, like, be Henry? How embarrassing every single day, nine, twelve-hour days of just being in this small group of guys watching them train and having to stand in these stress positions being made fun of. I didn't really learn any, like, lesson from this story. Like, the lesson I learned at the time was just shut the fuck up and mind your own business. Like, there's a much better lesson that I could have taken from that, but that was the lesson that I took from it, you know? Um, kind of reminds me grimly of um, the Iliad. When Achilles landed with his army to assault Troy... He turns and addresses his army, lined up on the beach. And before he really even says anything motivational, he picks out one guy, I'm pretty sure this is how it happened, who had a bunch of deformities, a very goofy-looking soldier, and he just starts making fun of him, and everybody laughs, right? It's just insane, like, how long that's been a thing in militaries and in, like, every military. You find the weakest soldier, and even though that they're going to end up making the ultimate sacrifice as well. Why not hoe on them a bit to raise morale? This sort of thing must happen, like, all the time, right? And it doesn't get talked about. And I don't think it gets talked about because even people who didn't participate in it feel uncomfortable, like me. I, I hate thinking about it. I, I, I hate thinking about it. 